Hey, Riley. How are you feeling? Any better? Has your fever gone down at all? It was pretty high yesterday. Super worried. Hey, Bill. No, not really. I don't feel any better. I think my temperature has gone down a bit, but to be honest, I still feel like crap. I still feel real tired. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm sorry to hear that. It must be tough. Have you already gone to the hospital or that clinic nearby? Yeah, I did. Went to the main hospital, took a taxi there. Felt sort of nauseous, too. And the doctor said it may be abdominal problems. You were pretty busy the past couple of weeks. All the work probably caught up to you. That kind of stress affects your stomach. Like ulcers. Yeah, you may be right about that. When I was younger, I could work late every day and it wouldn't affect me at all. You can't keep working like you are still in your 20s. Which means I'm getting old, huh? <laughs> I always think I'm still young and can go on forever. But having to realize that, it kind of gets you down. I feel old now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Everyone goes through the same thing. You may not be in your 20s anymore, but you're still really young. You've got a long ways to go. You're just tired and overworked. Just feeling a little fatigued. You'll recover in no time. I guarantee it. Just make sure you get plenty of rest today. That's the best medicine for now. Yeah, I just hope I feel way better tomorrow. I really don't want to be a burden to everyone at work. I also have a bunch of work I have to get done. I really don't want to take two days off from work. Well, that may be so, but you're still sick. There's nothing you can do. And you don't want to pass that on to people at work either. They'll understand. Don't worry about it. What you should do now is just relax and get plenty of rest. You'll be a burden on the others if you continue to be sick. Better to get better as soon as possible. Yeah, I know. I know I have to get better, but I can't stop thinking about it. I feel so bad staying at home in bed when everyone else is working. You're always working hard for the company. Doing overtime without complaining at all. Nobody in their right mind would complain if you took two or three days off. Your boss told you to rest up however long you wanted, right? I would listen to your boss. Yeah, I know. My coworkers said I should rest up and that they would handle all the excess work on my behalf and that I shouldn't worry. See what I mean? They want you to stay home and rest. They want you back 100% recovered. I would take it to heart. They all want you to get better. The more you rest, the more you'll get better. As for work, after you're completely recovered, you can dive right back into work again. Yeah, you're right, Bill. Thanks for that. I really should start thinking about my age and work according to the surrounding environment. I'm not getting any younger. I'm really sorry for worrying you about all this, but I appreciate your encouragement. I'm already starting to feel a little better. Yeah. And once you get back on your feet, let's go visit my folks some weekend. My folks are real worried about you too, so they couldn't wait to see you again. Uh, did you talk to your folks about me being sick? Yeah. They just called earlier, so I told them you've been sick with a fever since yesterday and that you took today off. They were really worried about you. My mom said you should have some of her homemade herb soup and get plenty of rest. I've been having hot soup every day. The soup that you made for me. Yeah. Mom told me how to make it. It has all kinds of ingredients in it. It works like a charm for me. Mom always made that for me when I got sick, ever since I was a kid. You really should keep trying it. It works. But I guess it didn't quite have the effect on you that I expected. Yeah, well, I guess my condition was a bit too potent for your mom's soup to conquer, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But you really should continue with it. It will eventually take effect. Besides, look at me. Have you known me to catch a cold or get sick? I'm healthy as a horse thanks to mom's soup. My whole family swears by it. You never see any of my family members get sick, do you? Well, there you go. Yeah, right. Come to think of it, your relatives never get sick, do they? But 
You know what? That soup is... How should I put this? The taste and smell are pretty potent. I have a hard time swallowing it. You know what they say. If it tastes bad, it's probably working. I really urge you to keep drinking it and you'll be better in no time. Probably won't ever get sick again. I'll make some more for you later tonight. You don't have to prepare dinner or anything tonight. Just rest up and I'll see you tonight. Yeah, all right. Thanks. I feel kind of bad not doing anything, but if you insist, I think I'll just go back to bed then. Hey, Riley. I just finished work and headed home. Is there anything you want at the store? Like some ice cream or something. It might be good for your throat. No, no thanks. I'm good. To be honest, I don't feel like eating anything. I really have no appetite. But you should eat something. Not a good idea to go to bed with an empty stomach. I can't eat anything. It just comes right back up. So I prefer not to eat anything. You seem pretty sick. Are you really okay? Yeah, I took the day off from work today. I feel so bad about taking time off, sitting at home like this, everyone working and all. I should be there on that new project. What can you do? You're not feeling well. All you can do is stay home and get well. You go to work in that condition, and it would just be a burden on everyone. Better to get better first. I can't figure out why I'm feeling so bad, always nauseous and fatigued. I thought I was pretty healthy. Yeah, well, as you get older, you start to lose immunity and get sick easier. There's also hormone balance. Maybe that's what it is, huh? That's probably why it's taking you so long to get better. I start to feel better for a while, and then the next morning I feel sick again. I can't understand it. I'm really getting fed up with this. Maybe I should see a specialist or something. Don't lose hope. Just rest and you'll eventually get better. I'm here with you every step of the way. Don't worry. I don't know how long I can bear this. I'm even thinking of quitting my job. I mean, what's the use, right? I can't even go to work. But you're always saying how much you love your job. You can't quit. You bet I like my job. That's what I live for. Everyone at the office is so nice. I enjoy working with them. That's why I feel so bad about taking time off like this. I'm just a total burden on them. I'm not giving 100% to my job. I hate myself for it. I see. I can sort of understand how you feel. Maybe quitting is a good idea, huh? All this worrying about your job is stressing you out. It's the stress that's affecting your health. So, if you get right down to it, Maybe it's a good idea to just quit and relieve yourself from all that stress. Maybe that's the cure. Yeah, I don't feel so good, so I take the day off. And with that guilt, I get stressed out and feel even worse. Boy, it's just a no-win situation. Why don't you try to purge yourself of all that stress and see how it goes? What do you say you quit your job and we move far away? Away from all of this? What do you think? Far away? Where do you have in mind? What about my parents' place? Tell you the truth. I've been talking to mom and dad about you and how you're not feeling well and that you're always stressed out. Then they offered to let us live with them. At your parents' place? That's pretty far. Yeah, it is a bit far. It's way out in the countryside. But that means the air is fresh and the water is sparkling clean. It would be the perfect environment for you. Definitely no stress out there. You'd get better in no time. This may be an opportune time to move out there and start over. What do you say? I don't know. That would be a burden on your folks. I couldn't ask them to take us in. Don't worry about it. Besides, it was my folks that suggested we move out there. They wouldn't mind. As a matter of fact, they would welcome us with open arms. But seems kind of sudden... And in the condition I'm in, I wouldn't be of much help. Uh, wouldn't be able to do much cooking or cleaning. I would just be a liability. Don't worry about that. Mom understands the situation. She said she would handle all the chores as she's always done. She just wants you to get better. 
So? Just leave it all up to her. She said to tell you that all she wants you to do is rest and get better as soon as possible. My mom is very concerned about you. Really? She said that? I had no idea she was so concerned. Uh, I really appreciate that. They both think of you as their real daughter. They said they would do anything to make you comfortable. So, don't worry about a thing. Yeah, well, I'm really grateful for all that love, but... What about you? What about your job? Yeah, about that. Apparently, they have a branch office right nearby, and I might be able to get transferred there. I put in a request a week's back just in case, and I hope to get a positive response soon. So, don't worry about me. It'll work out. But I'm sure the commute will be much longer. They do live pretty far out of the way. It would be hard on you going back and forth. Don't worry about it. I can handle it. What I'm concerned about is you getting better. What's a little commute if you get better, right? You and your folks are such nice people. Why do I even deserve such kindness from you guys? I'm really blessed to be surrounded by such wonderful people. Is it really okay for me to rely on your mom and dad? I really feel I'd be a burden on them. No burden. Just accept their offer and let's do this. Yeah, maybe you're right. Okay, let's do it. Tell your folks we'll move out there as soon as we can. Yeah, that's the right decision. You won't regret this. You'll get better in no time. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. My sister is living there too, but no need to worry about her. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about your sister. Would she really mind if I moved in with them? Yeah, but she lives separately from my folks. She has her meals and sleeps in a separate part of the house, and no worries. It's like she's just a neighbor. Probably won't even see her much. And besides, my sister's all for us moving in, so no problem there. Oh yeah? Well, that sure is a relief. In that case, I don't see a problem. Let's do this. All right. I'll call my mom today and tell her the good news. She'll be super happy about this. Hello, Riley. It's been a while, hasn't it? How are you? Do you have time to talk? Oh, hey, Carol. Yeah, it's been ages. What's up? Are you alone now? Excuse me? Alone? Yeah, I'm here alone at home. I took a few days off from work. I, I haven't been feeling well. I'm sure you heard. Where is my brother? He's not at home, is he? Bill? No, he's at work. Like I said, I'm all alone. Why? He probably won't be back until later in the evening. He usually gets home at 7 or 8 p.m. Okay, great. Well, that's a relief. This will be a good chance for me to tell you. I heard you were moving out here to live with my folks, but I urge you not to. I mean, don't move out here. Uh, why do you say that, Carol? Did I do something wrong? Bill told me that you were happy we decided to move out there. Did I hear wrong? Are you saying that you're not too happy about me moving in with your folks? Is that it? No, that's not it at all. It's just that I just don't want you moving out here and living with my folks. That's all. Nothing against you. Then why? Why don't you want me to move out there? Riley, I want you to calm down and listen to me carefully. If you move out here, your life may be in jeopardy. Uh, pardon me? My life's in danger? What's this about? Your folks live out in the countryside. Is it dangerous out there or something? Forest fires? That kind of stuff? You know, I've been sick for quite some time now. I was planning on moving out there with Bill to recuperate. It's all the stress from work, you know? Yeah, I was getting to that part about you being sick for so long. Hey, Riley, what do you think is the cause that you're feeling so unwell? It's definitely not stress, I'll tell you that much. I really don't know the cause, but I figured it was stress and fatigue from overwork. What else could it be? That's not true at all. You're just being told that uh, to think it's just stress from work. Uh, it's my brother. He... Ugh. Wait, come on, Carol. What are you talking about? What's this all about? Do you have something against your younger brother? Is that it? 
If you think my brother is some saint, you've got another thing coming. He's just like my parents. They're only interested in money. They're total scoundrels. Don't you dare trust them. You being sick for so long, that's all part of their plan, don't you see? Uh, how the hell do they plan for me to get sick and for so long? It makes no sense. My husband, your brother, has nothing to do with me being sick. He cares for me. He wants me to get better. And your folks, uh, they're very concerned about my well-being. That's why they invited me out there. They're not scoundrels. How could you even say that? Listen, Riley, I've been with these people for decades. I've seen what they've done and what they're capable of. I know these three like the back of my hand, way more than you'll ever know. I have suffered under their devious schemes for years. So I don't want you to suffer like I've suffered. I am telling you this for your own good. Okay, let's assume what you're saying is true, Carol. What's the purpose of all this then? Why make me sick? There's no reason for them to make me sick and get me to move out there. It's not as if they're going to make money out of it, right? Oh, you bet they will make money off of it. The more you get sick, the more to their advantage. That's why I'm telling you this. I am asking you not to go along with their treacherous plans. There is still time to save yourself. Like I said, you will put your life in danger if you come here. Stay away, please. Hey, Riley, you there? Did you think any about when to move out there? I talked to my boss today, and it looks like I may be able to work things out. I'm thinking about calling the moving company and setting up a date. How's it look for you? My folks said they'd help with the moving. You know, you being unwell and all. Hello. Riley said she's not moving out there. She changed her mind. Why don't you move out there yourself? Just the three of you? Seems fitting. Huh? Wait, who is this? This is Carol. Remember me? Your big sister, Carol. Uh, pardon me? What the hell are you doing on Riley's phone? Hey, are you there with my wife? Yeah, I am as a matter of fact. I decided to stop and see her. We needed to take care of some business, like going to the police. Police? What are you talking about? Hey, wait, sis. What are you planning on doing? Whatever it is, stop right there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going down to the police station to explain the devious scheme that you had laid out for your poor wife. That's what we're planning to do, and there is nothing you can do about it. Devious scheme? What the hell are you talking about? Come on, Bill, don't play dumb. I've known you all my life, and I know what you guys are up to. The reason why Riley is sick, it was you, along with Mom and Dad, that concocted this scheme, wasn't it? You made her sick on purpose. It was you, wasn't it? You were the one who mixed some sort of toxic substance into her food every night. Excuse me? Have you gone total insane? Why would I do that? Why would I do that anyways? What good would it do? If Riley ends up in the hospital, you get paid with the insurance. I'm right, aren't I? Sorry to burst your bubble, but Riley's not in the hospital, sis. Stop making up these lies and let me talk to my wife. That part of your plan didn't go as planned, did it? Riley was way healthier than you thought, and she's a fighter, too. That's why you came up with the plan to take her to mom and dad's place. If you bring her home, you have more opportunities of getting her even sicker. Come on, Carol. Will you just stop this BS? Why the hell would I jeopardize my wife's life for some insurance money? And besides, I love my wife. Just because I'm using Riley's phone, you don't have to lie through your teeth. I heard you talking about it to mom and dad. You said you had to get her sicker or you wouldn't be able to admit her into the hospital. You weren't giving Riley enough of that toxic substance. That's why she didn't get worse. Shut your mouth. I never said such a thing. Stop making up these fairy tales. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to pull us apart. Are you so jealous of Riley and me that we're happily married? 
You're such a pathetic sister, Carol. You're the ones that are pathetic. It was the three of you who concocted this scheme. Just so you know, I have plenty of proof, so no use denying it. I'm willing to act as a witness, too. What are you talking about? Proof? What proof? You got nothing. This is a trick to make me say something and incriminate myself. Well, it isn't going to work. I wish you would just admit it, Bill. How could you do such a despicable thing to me? You were trying to use me to get the insurance money? I could have died, you know. Is that you, Riley? I can't believe that your mom and dad were also in on this. You people are monsters. I feel like a complete fool for trusting you guys like I did. Come on, Riley. You don't believe any of what my sister says, do you? Don't believe a word she says. She's always making stuff up, and besides, always hated me. Seriously? I really don't think so. I tend to believe what she says. She's got proof, too, and she's just not the kind of person that would lie about something like this. And about me being sick, come to think of it, there were so many things that were just strange. Your actions, they all seemed to correspond with what she was saying. She probably just heard about your situation and made up some kind of story. My sister's always been a bit odd, always causing trouble for the family. She just can't be trusted. She's just doing this to disrupt our lives. It's some kind of twisted hobby she has. She's always been like this. I heard that she was disliked by you and your family and that she was shunned by you guys for years. Well, like I said, she was always causing trouble. That's why we wanted nothing to do with her. She was like this even when we were kids. And now as an adult, she hasn't changed a bit. We're simply fed up with her antics. You're a liar, Bill. She told me that you were always the one that was pampered by your parents. They didn't give her a second look. It was always all about you. I bet your sister was the only person in your family that was normal. And that's why your family couldn't get along with others. And it was your sister that was really concerned for my safety. How many times I have to tell you? She's lying. My folks are really concerned about you. No, it's no use, Bill. It's no use trying to convince me. I know the truth now. That soup you made me every night, that was the cause of my illness. You put something in that soup. The soup? What about the soup? You put something in it, didn't you? Some sort of toxic substance? There was still some left in the pot, so we gave it to the police as evidence. They're going to have it tested. If some sort of toxic substance is found in it, you won't be able to deny it any longer. You do realize that, right? So, if a toxic substance is found, what happens to me? Am I going to be arrested? Yes, that would be the obvious conclusion. And my life was on the line too. I could have been killed. You could go to jail for a long time. No, wait. This is all some sort of misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Are you kidding me? Just admit that you tried to poison me, your own wife! You know this more than anybody, Bill. Something will definitely be found in that soup. You okay with that? Admit it now and you may get a lighter sentence. I couldn't help it! It wasn't me! My mom and dad! They demanded that I do it! I had to do it! I had no other choice! Okay, so you do admit you did this. But it wasn't me. It was all my parents' fault. They made me do it. Your parents made you do it, huh? Did they hold a gun to your head or something? Are you trying to blame this entire thing on your parents? I was just talking to your sister earlier. She said that she recorded you guys talking about all this. I heard a part of it. I was horrified. How could you people talk like that? Like I wasn't even human, just a thing to be used. What was in the recording? What did you hear exactly? You were talking about what ingredient to put into the soup. Some sort of toxic substance that would make me sick. You all seemed so calm, like you were talking about getting rid of cockroaches. You weren't concerned about me in the least, just a tool to get money. Actually, you sounded like you were having fun. It may have sounded like that to you, but it wasn't like that. You got it all wrong. I was just playing along with my folks so they wouldn't be suspicious of me. 
I had to act like I was having a good time. You can understand that, right? I can't defy my folks. I was brought up that way. They have me under the thumb. Please, I don't want to hear any of your BS anymore. I'm going to believe your sister. She has way more credibility than you. I know you and your parents are in cahoots. I am not going to believe a word you say. I heard enough. So, you're saying you don't care if our lives are disrupted forever. Is that what you're saying? And this would definitely affect my job. Are you okay with that? I lose my job, and then what? You won't be able to live. You quit your job too. Have you forgotten about that? You'll be homeless. Penniless. I don't care what happens to you. I already filed for divorce. You guys can all go to jail for all I care. It doesn't concern me one bit. Uh, are you serious, Riley? Divorce? Really? Of course. What did you expect? I could have lost my life because of you people. You really think I would continue living with someone like that? I don't want anything to do with you ever again. I will be pressing charges, so my lawyer will be contacting you about damages. Please. Riley, let's just talk this over. Just please, don't press charges. Just tell the police it was a simple mistake. I just put the wrong ingredients in, or you can say my parents did it. So please, I'll do anything. Oh yeah? You'll do anything, huh? If you want a divorce so bad, okay, I'll allow it. If you want money, I can get you some. I have a bit stashed away. So please, drop all the charges. Let's talk this over. Please. If you drop the charges, the police will back off. Write it off as some domestic quarrel. So you'll allow me a divorce and even some pennies, huh? It's always about the money with you, isn't it? That's what pisses me off the most about you. The pure greed. You'd do anything for money. Well, I don't need your permission. I'll get the divorce. I'll squeeze every cent out of you and I'll have all three of you arrested. I'm not going to drop the charges. No, I'm going to double down on the charges. You criminals deserve to go to jail for life. Come on, Riley. Let's talk about this. I'm sure we can work something out to your advantage. If this all gets out, our lives are finished. Things will never be the same again. Please. Your lives were finished the day you concocted this scheme. Please. I'm only in my 30s. I'm in the prime of my life. You can't do this to me. You're really getting desperate, you know that? I can't listen to this any longer. Man, I feel like such an idiot getting duped by such idiots. You hoodwinked me with those kind words and your fake sympathy. You should get an Oscar for that performance. You took advantage of me. I was ill and not in very good shape. That was when I was most vulnerable. You knew that and you exploited the situation. I can never forgive you. Please, Riley, forgive me. I mean it. I'm sorry. I was agonizing whether I should tell you the truth or not. I really was. I didn't want to go through with it. I was grappling with the guilt. It's true that I was using you, but still, I felt guilty doing it. It was not easy to say the least, but like I said, I couldn't defy my folks. Their control over me is just too strong. You're really good at this, aren't you, Bill? The more I hear you talk, the more I hear who you really are. Just a hustler, that's what you are. I'm not trying to con you, I'm just being honest. The more I hear you, the more I don't believe you. I suggest you just shut up. Every word that comes out of your mouth, I have to stop and wonder if it's true or if it's another lie. I think it's mostly the latter. But I decided that every word that comes out of that mouth is a hundred percent lie. Makes things so much easier. <laughs> Please, wait. Please, believe me. I suggest you use that smooth talk and see how much you can con the police. You better hope they believe you.
But I doubt it. There's just a ton of irrefutable evidence. Your silver tongue won't get you very far. But if they prove that you are innocent, then I'll believe you. <laughs> As we expected, the test showed that there was indeed a toxic substance in the soup. Some sort of odorless, cancer-causing chemical. Apparently, it was a chemical that my husband got from his office. The police were able to match the evidence with what they found there. With that, Bill and his parents were arrested. During the court hearing, the three of them blamed each other, turning it into a complete three-ring circus. In the end, they deserved what they got, although it wasn't the years-long sentence that I wanted. They each got locked up for two years, plus another two as probation. But this case got a lot of media attention, and the three were constantly hounded by the media and by some very angry people. Needless to say, Bill got fired from his job. Before being sent off to jail, he paid damages to me and was left penniless. When he gets out, he'll probably be burdened with considerable debt. I just hope he doesn't come begging to me for help. As for me, I return to work and ever since I've been healthy and hardly ever take days off. Carol was also finally able to escape her family and last I heard, she got married and is living overseas now. I will forever be grateful to her for contacting me that day and telling me the truth about that awful family. <laughs>